save yourself the hassle, wear gloves. What's up y'all, welcome back. Um, today, we are gonna be doing an oil change and oil pan drop. Redoing the oil pan gasket on my 2010 bagger. Um, obviously, this is run of the mill stuff. Most people be commenting, oh, if, if you don't know how to change your oil, you shouldn't be working on your bike. Well, you know, some people didn't have people to show them. So for you guys that wanna get into this, don't have anybody to show you, and don't feel comfortable just reading the manual, I'm gonna help you out. Stay tuned. So, for the most part, all twin cams are the same almost. Um, you've obviously got three different drain plugs that you need to take out because you've got where your motor oil is held, you got where your tranny fluid is held, and then you also got where your um, primary is, and that's got a whole quart of oil in it. That's where your clutch and everything is for the people that don't know. Um, so, to get started with this, pretty much all, you know, twin cams are the same. You've got three different drain plugs you need to take out. You're gonna have your primary, you're gonna have your actual um, motor oil you need to drain, as well as your, uh, sorry, transmission fluid. Yeah, let me show you that. So, I already got past that on this because I forgot to record, but your primary drain plug is gonna be a 5 8 bolt that's gonna be right back here at the ass end of your primary. Then if you come around to the exhaust side and you look up under here, so here's your exhaust, here's your derby cover, right under the derby cover towards the front of it, you're gonna see this little hole, shoot, right here in this cross member. Up in that hole vertically is where your transmission drain plug is. And then obviously that's the oil pan there that you can see if you come to the front of the oil pan up here and to the left side of the bike is where your motor oil drain plug is. Now, they're all the same size. And if you wanna do things the right way, you can reuse the O-ring on the drain plug. But if you wanna do things the right way, replace it. Now, obviously it's an O-ring, it should be cheap, but Harley will probably charge it like $2 for one O-ring. Maybe they'll charge you like four bucks for the whole three of them, which is robbery. You can get on Amazon, do it like a week before you do this. That way you make sure you get it in time and you can buy like a 50 pack of them for, I think I just got mine for like 12 bucks. And to add a little more depth to this, the part number for those O-rings is 11105. So just type that in on Amazon, O-ring part number, 11105 and it should pop up real nice and easy for you packs of 50 and it's like 10 12 bucks and that'll last you i did the math it's like six oil changes or so and i do mine every three thousand so it's like eighteen thousand miles and that'll last you a long time and it's 12 bucks so um obviously you also have your oil filter which is right there it's always going to be on the front on the twin cams on the evos they used to be up under the rear but then some people put like a twin cam style one on them in the later years. Anyways, I run the K&Ns with the actual nut built onto them. It's just super easy. k and makes good stuff. Um, do not, do not, do not tighten these. This is another part that I already got past. This is the new oil filter. So what you're gonna do, obviously when you go to run the old one off, when you go to take it off, you know, just get a nut, or if you have to go get a tool, I guess you're gonna have to get an oil filter tool. That's why I run those, so I don't have to buy any specialty tools. But if you have a couple extra bucks to spend, get you one of these. A good old Harley Davidson uh, oil filter drain funnel. This bad boy just slides right up in there behind the frame rails, keeps you from getting oil everywhere. Sometimes it'll come over this, this backside, but that's just because the way that the oil lines are. Um, and then I usually just spray everything off with brake cleaner because it does make a mess sometimes. Um, and then before I put them on, what you want to make sure you do is get you one of your new quarts of oil, dip your finger in it, run a nice little bead of oil around the O-ring seal on the new, um, 
oil filter. That way when you're tightening it, it doesn't kink up, it doesn't tear. It just makes it glide on that mount, that mating surface real nice and smooth. Um, I usually throw some on the threads too. That's a little bit of overkill. Some people even prime them and actually dump oil in the oil filter. I don't, I don't really go that far. I don't think you need to. That's what you have an oil pump for. Um, also, other note, before you drain in all your oil to make sure it comes out easy, you don't have to wait hours on it, start your bike up, let it warm up for a while, and... I mean, don't make it like blistering hot. Like, you know, let it run for two to three minutes, enough to get it warm and let it circulate. Then you can pull all your drain plugs. Um, another side note on top of that side note, uh, for those of you guys, again, who don't know, this is gonna be for the guys that are just getting into this stuff. When you're pulling your drain plug out, it might seem like not that much oil comes out. So obviously down here, you have your motor oil fill hole and your transmission fill hole transmission fill hole pull those out it just opens up the airflow that way it's not like a vacuum in there and it'll just all flow out super easy now for what you guys should know again i'm going to make this as basic as it can be for the people that don't know it's gonna be a how-to all twin cams and then of course on the transmission fluid some people will argue about this but harley's twin cams Pretty much all Harleys, I think, but I know for a fact twin cams. Take 20 weight, 50, regular oil. I run a Valvoline VR1, it's like racing oil. It's probably overkill, but I'm in the desert. It gets really hot out here, and this thing's air-cooled, so it runs really hot. Um, yeah, so um, you get four quarts of that for the motor, you also get a fifth quart of the 20W50 because that's what your primary takes is one quart of the 20W50, standard motor oil, none of that synthetic BS. And then your transmission fluid is going to be just regular gear oil. Now, I've ran Royal Purple before, but that stuff is really expensive. And what I'm running this time is just this Lucas heavy duty gear oil. It's going to be 85 140. I was always taught to run heavier if you can get it. I don't know if that's as true out here, especially as hot as it gets. Um, I've also been told you can run straight. What did the guys up at, what did Crucy tell me? I think it was straight, some kind of straight weight oil. And that's just cause it's so hot out here. They, I guess they run better off of that, but I'm not so sure about that. And I don't have the money to fix it if it blows up and it's been running fine with the oil that I run. Um, yeah also if you guys want a part number for these uh oil filters for the KN oil filter with the nut on the back it's going to be kn-171 i think it's 171b for the black one and 171c for the chrome one and if you get any advance or uh autozone or o'reilly's that's going to be the part number kn-171 and then b or c yeah Okay, so what you're gonna need to drop an oil pan. I got a 3 16 long, a 3 16 Allen short. Um, some of these Allens, like specifically that one right there, is kind of difficult to get to. So I may have to find another one of these. I've seen where some people make specialties and they'll cut this one here about in half. That way they can get right in here above the frame rail. Hopefully I don't have to get to that point yet. I got a bunch of other Allen set out. I don't plan on using any of those. That was just to kind of get a size. So ignore all of that. But let's get started. All right, all right.
right, here we go, guys. It's time to pull this bitch out of here. I really hope this will come out without having to pull the tire off because I will be very upset if I have to pull the tire off. All right, now let's try this. Well, guys, uh, stand by. It looks like we might be pulling this rear tire off. That'll be fun. There it is. No, I don't do this either. If that rear tire wasn't there, this wouldn't be an issue. Cool. Another fancy little trick I like to use when I'm pulling off pans and plates and covers and stuff is I make one of these out of cardboard. So the top, you can't really see it because it's covered in oil now, but it says front, and at the bottom it says rear. Basically, and sometimes I'll even like trace out a little outline so you know where these bolts go. Because like for the primary, for example, when you tear those apart, the bolts are different lengths and they have certain holes they go in. So this helps you from getting all mixed up. What up, what up? We're back again, dude. So I didn't get this finished yesterday because I had to go to the parts store and grab this stuff, like I said. Um, basically the way that your manual um, puts it is you're supposed to put this Permatex or Hylomar is what the manual calls for on the oil pan flange. So like on the oil pan mating surface. And then you're gonna put your oil pan gasket on that. You're gonna let it get tacky. So like put just enough on there where it's gonna poke out the sides of it. And then when it gets tacky, I'd probably wipe the edges off. And then that's when you're gonna actually put it up in there. So again, like I said, you're just gonna wanna poke a nice Put a nice little small bead, nothing crazy, just a bead. Honestly, probably gonna have to wipe some of this up because it's coming out pretty hefty. There's too much of it. I'm not really a fan of how much is coming out right now, but it's got to go on there. And then I'll probably get a glove on here and wipe this all nice and even before I go putting the gasket on. And if it gets in these mounting holes, like that's not a big deal, but the ones you wanna watch out for is like this big hole up here that actually has oil flow through it. I think I'm pretty sure this is your return hole, as well as this hole over here is your transmission uh, drain line. So just make sure that doesn't get messed up. I mean, you can, of course, you can get a paper towel and clean that out or whatever you need to get, but you don't want all that junk in there. Oh yeah, dude, this stuff is pretty thin. I'm sure there's a better way to do this, and I'm probably just not doing it the right way. Because I'm not a professional, but I try to do stuff professionally on a budget. Another thing is clean your mating surface off. Before I did all this, I cleaned all this off with some rags and some brake cleaner. I don't know if you can hear me real well right now. I live close to an airfield, so it's loud here sometimes. Yeah, you're just gonna, it's a nice little coat. Nice little coat. I have to make a nice layer. Not too much, not too little. I'm gonna focus on these lines first and this inner edge. Because the outside you can always take care of later. While the inside you cannot. probably be better off to do this with rubber gloves which I have some sitting right there so I should probably use those instead of acting like a clown right now and this looks like this is already getting tacky so yeah that's that's getting tacky I'm gonna put this gasket on Get you a nice even press. That's probably right there's a little bow. Hopefully that sticks. Just get you a nice little press. That way it all stays on there real good. There. 
nice and purdy. Now that's actually starting to get tacky. So let me see if I can get this on here. Now, mind you, I did say I was probably wrong and I was wrong. Oh Jesus. So I was wrong. You have already seen this by now, but the correct torque spec on these bolts is going to be 132 to 156 inch pounds. Now guys, Now mind you, I did say before, like I made my little cardboard tablet to hold all of my hardware. But what I have learned is that that doesn't matter on this oil pan at least, at least on this model, because all these oil pan bolts are the exact same size. Now of course, compared to most Harley manuals, it's gonna tell you to buy new bolts. Now this one does tell you that if you plan to use the old bolts to just apply one to two, drops of Loctite, but I only really apply one. Two is pretty fucking hefty. It's blue, it'll hold. And shove this up in here. Slide it on in there, make sure not to bump your gasket. Come on now, please don't hit anything. And then from here, we're gonna start installing bolts. Now, one tool that I do not have that I would definitely recommend would be a thread chaser. I would recommend having like a thread chaser, a tap and die set essentially to chase out these old holes because the old Loctite gets stuck in them, and, and so does everything else. It's, it's just a smart thing to do. And again, you're not tightening these down yet. I'm just putting them in my hand. Going to get them all nice and snug. And then we'll go back through, do the proper torque pattern, and get everything taken care of. And the reason that you have to put the tire back on first is because there is no way that you are getting past your jack to get these bolts there in the center out there. Now, as you can see, I've got oil coming from. Ah, that's gonna be taken care of. I don't want that messing up my seal. you off please stop well here we are back again after like the nine millionth time that i go to harbor freight because i think that i have a tool that i don't have so there is a torque sequence to this which goes All right, so that's in. I am gonna let that uh, Permatex uh, like gasket dressing dry all night before I go spraying that off with any kind of like brake cleaner to get that oil that dripped off of there. Cause I cleaned that whole pan. That's kind of annoying that that dripped back on there. Not a big deal. But anyways, instead of spending all your money on drain plug O-rings at Harley, where like one oil change and you know just three O-rings probably gonna cost you like three, four, five, six dollars, depending on the dealership. Get on Amazon, part number, 11105. Order you a pack of these bad boys. This is 50 for 10 bucks. You got Prime, that shit's there in a day, as long as you don't live in the boonies. Oh. So yeah, let's throw those on, throw the drain plugs back in. And we'll let this sit tonight, and we'll come back at it tomorrow. Grab you. Another O ring. Yes, make sure there's no junk on your 
drain plug, no dirt, grime, pieces of the old O-ring. Bada bing, bada boom, that's all three done. I'll slap these bad boys in there. Hey y'all, we're back. It's day number two, which really shouldn't take two days, but here we are. Um, last night when I wasn't recording, when I got home from work, I threw in the coral oil that goes in the primary. Um, all you gotta do for that, because I didn't record it, was pull out your derby cover bolts, which is a T27 Torx. Um, it's five bolts when you put them back in just to drop a Loctite and it's, you're putting steel bolts and aluminum, so just give it a snug. You're not give it, you're not putting a lot of torque on those ones. Um, and then this morning already, I already threw in two quarts of oil and probably three quarters to almost a quart, the full quart of oil that goes in the transmission. So now I'm gonna start it up, let it get up the running temperature and see where we're at with everything, see if I need that anymore. Obviously I will for the motor, but just wanted to see where I'm at. All right, y'all, that's gonna do it for this one. Here we are, um, all loaded out, ready to go on about another 2,000 mile trip. Hopefully it's a good one. Uh, the other, my other half is getting to go with us on this one. So that'll be fun. Um, I'm gonna make a video out of that. Uh, probably gonna get to ride through some cool places. Gonna get to see Vegas for the first time. Um, yeah. And, you know, if you guys have any questions or anything, I'm usually on the page a lot. So just comment and I can answer your question whenever I can. Thanks, guys. Don't forget, like, comment, subscribe.